Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays everyone! Even though I know this video is coming out after Christmas, I want to say out of the gate though that this is not just a rehash of my latest video tips on like Boja leveling. We are going to get absolutely down and dirty here with what I learned grinding all my jobs to 90 and new trips above and beyond what I said there. And to my black mage friends who I know are probably ripping their hair out going, oh my god I can't get any credit and I can't get a single cast off. I do actually have tips and tricks for you that I personally did when I leveled black mage and trust me it did make the world of difference because I was right there with you pulling out my hair. So whether you are here for relic weapons or leveling or whatever, this is going to be making it significantly faster your time in the boat in Southern Front. Especially for those who are listening for leveling, you're at the right places. I have hit level 90 on all of my combat jobs on Christmas Eve and then completed all my crafters and gatherers literally yesterday, which I'd consider a pretty solid speed given the queues, working full time and doing videos. I'm Omni 90s and it feels so good having that weight off of my shoulders, but that speaks to how quick this method actually is. So I practice what I preach and as always with this channel I practice what I preach and I put my money where my mouth is. I wouldn't do something if, or I wouldn't recommend something if I wouldn't do it myself and I did actually do it this way. So for those who have no idea why I'm talking about Boja for leveling optimization, by far Boja is the fastest way to level when done properly in my experience. I have tried dungeons, I have tried MSQ roulettes, I've done like the whole gambit. Even with the 6.0.1, this is with the dungeon experience boost, this is still absolutely by far beating it in my experience unless you have like 10 minute dungeon runs which is apparently a thing i can st i've struggled to get it below 15 minutes and i'm dpsing as a healer to the point where i'm making my tank probably crit their pants so if you can do that and get it down to 10 minutes, okay, maybe we have an argument here, but from like level 81 to 87, there's just not really a contest. But I digress, I'm getting off the topic. But even if you interleave dungeon runs for the bulk of your leveling experience, just because you want to try out the classes and some content, the best way to tackle the remaining bits of experience is Boja hands down. Because like, the dungeons don't give you experience that fits nicely into the level because I actually went and did it myself and I noticed like, oh shoot, I have like a big chunk of experience left, which would not be justified by another dungeon, but I, I just slammed Boja there. Now to the new tips that will make Boja absolutely lightning fast, and I am not exaggerating, that is not clickbait, this will get you like three skirmishes a minute, That's that was like what I was getting pretty frequently unless there was like no skirmishes on the map, literally three per minute. First up is Lost Burst and Lost Rampage actions are extremely extremely, and I mean extremely OP, important and powerful tools. If you can get your hands on them, absolutely get your hands on them. I genuinely do not think I could have done Black Mage or even Red Mage properly in Boja, actually especially Black Mage. I really genuinely will even say on my channel, I don't think I could have leveled Black Mage in Boja if it was not for Lost Burst. I think Red Mage I could have maybe done, but it would have been way slower. To be blunt with everyone, if you haven't tried it yourself, it is simply very, very hard to get casts off in there because the mobs die so quickly or because they're being dragged one way or another it's just really really hard in my experience but through the grind i noticed it became really trivial to land gold ranking on skirmishes with these two actions actually genuinely trivial <laughs> i'm not exaggerating like it's so easy so my strong recommendation is to buy these up on the market board or obtain them however you can ask friends do whatever um they made the grind really trivial for me plus spamming one button i literally put it to like my two key and i just i kind of <laughs> how to say I just kind of spammed two and it didn't matter was I awake was I asleep did I just have a little bit of caffeine in me like just drank a little bit of matcha or whatever I just spammed the two key I didn't ask many questions I didn't really have to think and it made it easier to do the grind because I was listening to a podcast and I literally listened to things like the Fermi paradox and just like all these different scientific theories and that and I was honestly paying more attention to that than the game if I'm being super honest which was actually really cool to learn about but I digress I cannot recommend these enough Second big tip is to learn how to get wrecked and to <laughs> really die quickly in this game. This is why I now recommend normal Breathtaker Essence. It is far cheaper and you will get a ton of these naturally in Boja, which makes them very, very cheap, if not free to keep getting. After a certain point, I just stopped needing to spend any gill on them. But why death and why learn to die fast? This is like counterintuitive. But this is because the mob aggro radius is an infuriatingly large, and I mean infuriatingly large. That is not an exaggeration radius. Uh, this is why I so often hear people say they hate Boja, they hate Boja because of this, they will never touch Boja again, this is the worst thing, and the aggro radius has is like one of the top things that I hear people list off in why. Thankfully there's a solution. Let the AI, the little like mobs, do their <laughs> work, what they want to do, what they were designed to do, 
and kill you. It's a free lodestone or a no cooldown retard, so why not literally die? And it, this really came after a long while of myself, like me myself, who made the Boja leveling videos being frustrated at this learn to force my death and ways to make it faster to die. So these tips will make the world a difference for you all, uh, for sure, for leveling actually, because it was revolutionary and like pushed me personally to sometimes hitting three skirmishes in a minute. Yes, really, three in a minute, not exaggerating. So that's like, what, 990k experience or something like that? And really, I am all level 90s this fast because I did pull the stunts, pulled the tricks like that. I death dropped my way to success. Literally. <laughs> I wonder how many people are even gonna notice that in the comments. Yes, I did a death drop, oh my god. But you know what, it worked. So there's obvious things, so things like outside of standing orange telegraphs, which I do recommend you do once you've slammed down a few lost bursts or lost rampages, which will send you back to the spawn very, very quickly. There are mobs that I wanna identify here, very special mobs that will kill you very, very quickly. And should you try and, you should actually try and run and aggro them at your soonest opportunity. Ideally, if you can dash, dash to them to let them two shot you faster. I'm gonna color code a map on the screen here with some labels. So zone one, the first thing is the Tideborn Angel, which will obliterate you very quickly when you're near it. The next thing is going to be Legion Death Claws around there. It can be possible because they like do a charged up attack that really does a good burst, but it will take far longer to dispose of you, so I'm going to generally shy away from them. But in a pinch, they're better than nothing because there's a big open spot in the map where it's like you're far from everything else, so it's like it's the best you can do. Ink Claw is going to be my number two on the map, and beside the Ink Claw, there are these phantoms that are all right, but I didn't find myself using the phantoms all that often to die just because there was no skirmish near them. The Ink Claw would be faster if I needed to use it. Now, Olana's hot dog stand is really gonna be a little bit tricky. Above Olana's stand is gonna be the worst case zone. There isn't really anything here that can easily ruin you quickly, meaning that these stupid rock lobsters are actually your worst enemy in Boja. Honestly, screw them. I'm not gonna even hold it back. I hate them so much. They, I probably actually could have shaved off literally hours just because of these stupid rock lobsters. Also, the little mobs, like the little, um, I don't even know what to call it, and then the like angry, like, like wheel thing is like really rough too. Getting in and out of Olana's hot dog stand, generally speaking, is generally hard to avoid the mob aggro if I'm super honest. Now for the rest of zone two, so glad. PSO Glav, I don't know how to pronounce it, is further up north and is our third point on the map, which is actually going to be useful for one skirmish that pops up here, which has that unicorn for sure. The Bojan Bandersnatches are awesome, son of a Bandersnatch, uh, to die, and I use the Bojan Bandersnatch all the time. Uh, the Bojan Taipan are on the west side of the second zone and will be great for a few skirmishes like the Supplies one, and then there's like a Healer Dude skirmish. You will learn to lear love these Bojan Taipans. Zone 3 is actually very easy to die in, which makes it fantastic, which is one reason Reason I began to focus down in zone 3 fates, uh, how to do it. I would do the zone 3 fates usually first because I knew I could tag them, die quickly, head to the lower ones easier, then go lower and go up and tag. Uh, Bojan snakes are going to be at point 6 and work wonders at the top left hand side of the map. That's good for a few skirmishes for sure. Uh, next up is going to be the Bojan Anzu above Camp Stevia. <laughs> Not sponsored. And then the thick boys beside Camp Stevia on the right hand side of the map are really good too. There's no really big reason to be trapped in at any point in Camp Stevia after tagging really. Should be your fastest face to get in and out of. Then in terms of zone 3, one of my favorites that I used so often was the Bojan Wajets here. I'd often aggro them as I ran to the Dog Fate, the MDK Fate, which would get me enough time to contribute with Lost Burst or Lost Rampage and then quickly <laughs> immediately be uh, forcefully ejected to spawn and then go to the next fate after tagging. It was very fast. In fact, those were probably some of my favorite fates. They were really, really, really quick. Anyhow, this video, I was thinking I was gonna like lump in the older tips and tricks, but then I'm like, well, they can already go to that video. So if you have like any concerns about like, what is a breath taker essence? How do I speed myself up? I actually have already covered that in my other video. That link's gonna be in the description and I'm gonna pin a comment with that in there. Um, and so totally check that out. I'm just trying to keep this to the newer updated techniques tips and tricks and pretty much if you do all of these from the first video plus this video you should be knocking out like three skirmishes in a minute uh, totally dependent on the map spawn you should be basically not held back at all be very 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 s speaking from personal experience at all 90s uh quick to uh cap all your jobs actually yeah, take care everyone and hope you're having a marvelous holiday season merry christmas and all that and all that i say <laughs> i'm just trying to keep the video below 10 minutes because if it's over 10 minutes people get mad but genuinely seriously merry christmas everyone and thank you so much for being here hope you're having all the love and kindness and fun in the world for real though